Hello and welcome to another episode of Rise with Raluca. Today we will be talking about gratitude and elevated emotions in general. I am just having my morning coffee right now, feeling a little sleepy today. I'm in the midst of um, packing for a trip and we're just preparing everything, getting everything together. And I'm actually feeling pretty good. You know, some like there's always a lot to do before you go somewhere, before you go on a trip. And sometimes I can get in a little bit of a stress, like, oh my gosh, when am I going to do everything? How is everything going to get done? Because, you, you know, there's all these things to do, like around the house, running errands, like finishing up on work things. But this time I'm just like, mm, everything that needs to get done will get done. And so far it just seems to be working out. I even had time to rest. Last night I, I was just laying down resting. I was watching actually on um, TikTok. I found this creator, Madison Humphrey, I believe her name is. And she just does these uh, skits. Uh, she just acts like different characters. And she's so, so good and so funny. So I was just enjoying watching her TikToks, TikToks laying down. It was a nice brain break. Sometimes we need those. We need a little mind break. So I want to talk to you today about gratitude and why gratitude is important. And all elevated emotions are important, but I'm going to talk about this one in in specific, as well as a little bit of diving into heart coherence and um, heart rate variability. Okay, these are all tied in together. So I've recently picked up well, just like the topic of gratitude really brought back to my um, attention or like back to my thoughts, Dr. Joe Dispenza and specifically his book, Becoming Supernatural. Becoming Supernatural. And he has a new um, meditation out focused on the heart, which is beautiful. So he has like a new 30 minute meditations meditation out, which is nice because uh, some of his meditations were like an hour long which were also nice like um I did those a lot during 2020 but I don't have the like patience right now to sit down for an hour and maybe I'll build up to that eventually as well Ooh, side note um on the lab of life podcast we had um Dr. Marvin Belzer, Marv Belzer on as a guest and he was talking we talked about mindfulness so we also had a mindfulness episode and then we had him on as a guest, as our expert, he was, he's a professor at UCLA teaching mindfulness. And we spoke to him about meditation and mindfulness practices. And he said, right now, he's he will practice mindfulness for about like, sit in meditation for about an hour a day. But it wasn't always like that. You know, like you start wherever you start and you build up on that, which is nice because, you know, I'm not ready to dive back into like our meditations right now. Like as we grow, we change, we go through different phases that I honestly feel like I'm a different person than I was like two years ago. But as we change and we get out of these practices, we have to give ourselves like give ourselves some grace. So I'm starting meditation again and I do it on and off. And some days I don't do it. And some days I can only do five minutes. Some days I can do 20. But, you know, I'm just going to be gentle with myself and... um not push it because it's supposed to be something we want to do, not something that we force ourselves into doing. We don't want to just add another thing to our to-do list just because it, I don't feel like it really gives that much benefit if we're not wanting to be there. <laughs> so that was, um, yeah, just a little side note. If you're struggling with meditation too, and you want to bring it back into your life, just start small. And we do want to make like maybe a daily habit out of it, but sometimes we're not there. So we also just have to be gentle. Okay, so gratitude and Dr. Joe Dispenza's book. So I picked it up again and I'm just flipping through it as I'm wanting to talk about gratitude because I remember he had so much beautiful information in here. I... 
think that gratitude is important, and I think a lot of people talk about this as well, is because gratitude is an elevated emotion. And it's one of the easiest elevated emotions to tap into. So I have, if you're watching the video, I have like Dr. Julia Spence's book here, Becoming Supernatural. And there's this chart of the waves of emotions, the frequency of emotions. And honestly, I've seen different ones um, ranking the elevated emotions kind of in different order. But the idea is the same. Um, so here, the lowest emotions, the skills, like the lowest frequency emotions are ranked as pain and then victimization, suffering, shame is one of the lowest ones, then guilt, then fear, then anger. So anger is a low frequency emotion but it does have power so we need to remember that that when we when we're feeling angry that can be channeled into something else anger can be powerful if we know how to use it if we don't it can also destroy us um then anger power will then gratitude so gratitude is a little bit higher frequency emotion gratitude and then appreciation then joy love freedom and bliss bliss being the highest elevated emotion and like i said people have rated these in different um different order i'm not exactly sure which one would be the most accurate one but we get the idea so gratitude would be the e the easiest elevated emotion to tap into at least it is for me gratitude and appreciation so we can tap into those things. And I like this because we can tap into gratitude at any time. This is why gratitude practices are important. And we can, you know, just we can think of something that we were grateful for and bring that emotion into our hearts. We can think of, I like sometimes somebody will bring me a coffee and that brings so much, like I'm grateful for that. It's such a small action and it just makes me happy and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for so many things in my life. So it can be like a small thing, like a thing your partner did yesterday, um, a message from somebody. And it can also be really big things, really big, beautiful things in your life that you're grateful for. But sometimes, especially when you're low, when you're feeling in those low states of emotions like anxiety or fear or just when you wake up in the morning and like oh I just don't want to do today I find that those small small things that you're grateful for are easiest to tap into rather than thinking the, of the big things that we're grateful for like the really big things that are good in our lives which is so interesting that it's like that but it's how it is like a small act of kindness can bring gratitude to your heart so gratitude is important and Dr. Joel still talks about it in this book because it's connected to our heart rate variability. And th this heart rate variability is connected to our heart coherence. So heart rate variability, I'm sure you might have heard this term before, heart rate variability measures our heart coherence. So the higher your heart rate variability number is, HRV, the higher your heart coherence is. And what it does, the heart rate variability, wow, I said that a lot in the past two minutes. <laughs> it is a measurement of the variation of the heart's beat-to-beat -beat interval, intervals. So the space in between your heartbeats. We used to think that your heart beats in a consistent rhythm, but then like it was realized, scientists realized that each beat of your heart is different. And the heart rate variability measures that space in between. When your heart is coherent, like I said, that state of heart coherence is connected to a higher heart rate variability. So this is important. We want a high heart rate variability, like a, a state of heart coherence, because 
This measures the flexibility of our heart and our nervous system, and that speaks to our overall health and um, our mental and emotional well-being as well. Because when you have a higher HRV, you have more space in your nervous system and you can handle life's challenges. You can adapt to them better. So isn't that amazing how it's all connected? And we tap into that HRV, like in a higher HRV, through heart coherence. And we tap into heart coherence through elevated emotions. So this is just like scientific proof that our emotions and how we feel is important. Isn't that wild? Okay, so when we have a higher HRV, it measures the flexibility of our nervous system and that speaks to yeah, our fitness and our mental, emotional well-being. We want a high HRV because then we have more space in our nervous system. And when our HRV is low, this is like a state of heart incoherence. And emotions like frustrations, anger, worry, irritation brings us out of coherence. And elevated emotions like gratitude, appreciation, love, joy, that brings us into heart coherence. So this is amazing because since our heart coherence changes beat to beat, like our, I mean, our heart rhythm changes beat to beat. When we tap into that elevated emotion, we can instantly change our heart rhythm. Like we can change our coherence. We can change our HRV. We can do good things for our body. And this was also shown um, he also spoke about it in this book about his study. He did an independent study with the students and when they were able to hold elevated emotions like a, a practice of gratitude for 15 to 20 minutes a day. So it was gratitude or other elevated emotions that they could tap into. After only four days, their energy and that heart coherence already signaled to their immune cell genes to create more protein cells, the immune, immunoglobul, immunoglobulin A, the IgA protein cells from our immune system. So that is a change with only within 44 days, 15 to 20 minutes of gratitude a day already signaled a positive effect on their physiology. And I'm sure there were positive effects on their mental, emotional well-being as well, but this is what was measured. And like we have that proof that our body is responding to us. And when we're in our heart coherence, this re- it just reduces stress on other systems and increases our energy and helps us thrive emotionally, mentally, and physically. But those lower vibrations bring us out through lower vibrations. Those lower frequency emotions bring us out of coherence and we don't want that because that how that then it's harder it decreases our hrv and then it's harder for our body to adapt to life's changes it's harder for for it's harder for us to deal with stress and when we're in that state of incoherence, it leaves less energy for healing, for our body to heal because it's dealing with these other things. It's dealing with stress and when, and just creates this sense of unrest. And then I know, I know you know that feeling when you are just so worn out emotionally and you've had a period of high stress that you feel that if one more thing happens that if you have to make one more decision you're just going to fall apart or you just like you want to I don't know unleash go crazy cry I that feeling that if one more thing happens you just can't handle it and that is an indication of a low HRV you're in a state of incoherence. Most importantly, your nervous system is just worn out. There's no more space in your nervous system to deal with anything. 
So if we tap into these feelings like gratitude, the elevated emotions, we can help our heart and brain be in a state of coherence. We can be in that state of coherence with our heart and create more space in that nervous system. And we can better deal with life's problems. But there's other ways to help the nervous system when you're in that state as well. Like breath work is so powerful, also brings you in heart coherence, depending on the breath work. Um, doing somatic release, you just anything you're releasing from what you're carrying to help you create space in that nervous system is really powerful here when you're in that state. Okay. So when your heart coherence, your heart and brain are communicating. So like the positive emotions in your heart send that signal to your brain to send those um, chemicals. What are, do I want to say? Neurotransmitters? Oh my gosh, I'm losing the word that I want to say here. But it's sending that signal back from your brain into your body and producing all those like happy hormones and everything that you need to align with the positive emotion. But when you're feeling those lower frequency emotions like fear, anger, um, shame, guilt, we really want to get rid of shame and guilt because these are low frequency emotions. They're just hurting us. And I know a lot of people, a lot of women and a lot of people deal with the shame and guilt. And we just want to get rid of this one because it's just not a good one. So when we're in that state of the lower frequency emotions and our heart is incoherent, our heart rate variability is all over the place, it sends that signal to the brain and then your brain, I think it was something like 1,200 different chemicals are sent throughout your body and it just like creates this overload of feelings, of emotions, of... Um, stress and it was something like that flow of the chemicals that are released I say chemicals but these are you know it's not chemicals it's like natural it's part of your body's hormones I'm just losing the word here I don't know if that's the proper one but that flow of what's released lasts from 90 seconds to two minutes which can be okay because when we like work through that period of high stress, it actually like increases your um, strength, your ability to deal with things. It can be actually a positive thing. But the problem is that most of us are in these states chronically. We're in these states all of the time, like every day with chronic stress and chronic fear and just ruminating on those things that we feel shameful and guilty and angry and fearful about all those like the things that we feel that make us in victim mode so we can be in this chronically and that has an effect on us long term that really lowers our immune system lowers our hrv lowers our capacity to handle things so this is why gratitude is important this is why the elevated emotions are important it's like sometimes when we're in those low states we have to lie to ourselves a little bit and well not lie to ourselves but like purposely bring ourselves into a state of gratitude it's like it's a practice because we're cute creatures of habit and if we were stuck in these states of fear guilt shame anger suffering whatever, if that is what we tend to go into, we have to make a mindful practice of tapping into gratitude and tapping into the higher emotions. And when we get used to this, when we get used to tapping into gratitude, we naturally start looking for things to be grateful for throughout the day, or we naturally start looking for things to appreciate throughout the day. I don't know if you ever listened to um, Abraham Hicks, but they also talk about like having sessions of rampages of ap- appreciation. So that's another practice we could do. So I'll talk about uh, these things, how to tap into our gratitude and appreciation. Right now, I'm just going to have a sip of coffee. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in my opinion, 
gratitude is one of the easiest ones to tap into gratitude and appreciation love can sometimes be a little bit harder and bliss and freedom those feelings can feel a little bit more abstract but we can feel gratitude and we can feel appreciation so with gratitude what i like to do there's a few different things that we can do so a lot of people will do like a gratitude journaling practice i do like to do that i also like to do a gratitude meditation so kind of just sitting and breathing um if you want to do a heart coherence breath i think you can look this up i'm pretty sure the heart coherence breath is just five a breath breathing in for count of five and breathing out for a count of five and it's kind of in a like a circular motion as then there's no break in between so you just breathe in for five breathe out for five but you don't have to do that breath but you can but just look just double look that up i'm sure there's a guided meditation on that but with the gratitude meditation i just like to sit in that space kind of center down into my body and um, then start thinking of one thing i'm grateful for something small something i can tap into easily maybe that something that happened most recently and then i feel like a little stirring within like a little positive emotion starting to brew, brew up a little feeling of gratitude and then once i have that it's easier to tap into the next thing that I'm grateful for. Then I think of one other thing that I am grateful for. What else happened? What else is good in my life? What other small thing can I think of that I'm grateful for? And then I bring that emotion and it builds up onto it. And then I keep going with that and just allow myself to be in that state of gratitude and feeling. And once I have that, then I can start journaling on gratitude as well. Or I can stay in that state you, you, we can put a timer on, just put on some music. Um, frequency music is also really beautiful. You can look up a solfeggio frequency for the heart chakra. I don't remember how, what hertz that would be. I don't know if it's 581. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to look, look it up one second. Okay, so bettersleep.com says that the heart chakra so frequency is 639 639 hertz so you can put something like that on to help you tap tap into that heart energy and then start thinking of those things you're grateful for and just allow that emotion to wash over you when you really have it you can stay in that space and the cool thing with heart coherence and with that state of gratitude is that it can also help us manifest so when we're in a state of heart coherence we're not only sending those signals into ourselves to be like hey grateful for you everything's awesome let's like be in a state of health um it also sends that signal out into the world it radiates out so then when you're in that state of gratitude you can start thinking of how grateful you are for the future that you are creating you can bring an intention into your awareness to of something that you want, of something of you in the future, of how you picture your life, and send gratitude towards that. That brings it closer to you. Gratitude is a form of manifestation as well. When we are grateful for what we are creating, because we realize that in the quantum, we have we already have it is just about us aligning to that and being grateful allows us to become closer to that it helps to close the gap and it signals out to the universe when we're feeling fearful or like um like fearful of something that we want that we won't get it that sends um like an incoherent signal into the universe so we want to be grateful for what we're creating. We want to appreciate it. And that brings us closer to it. Okay. So we tap into that feeling by thinking of small things we're grateful for and allowing that energy to grow. And once we're in it, we can use that gratitude for manifestation as well. So remember, it's good for your body, good for your health, good for your nervous system, 
also helps you create things. So we want to be in a state of heart coherence. We want to we want to appreciate the wisdom of our heart and help our heart be in a rhythm with the mind, with the brain. We want it to send signals to the brain. And it just creates this beautiful state of homeostasis. So another way of practicing gratitude is just journaling on the things that you're grateful for. And same thing, allow those feelings to begin to wash over you, allow that emotion to grow. The important thing with gratitude is that we allow the emotion to grow. We want something to stir up that emotion. And we want, once you like have it a little bit, keep adding to it, build the momentum. Because if we just say we're grateful for her, like, oh yeah, I know I should be grateful for this. Like, I know I should be grateful for that. For I know I should be grateful for my health. I know I should be grateful for all the abundance that I have and like the roof over my head and the food that I have. But like sometimes you just don't feel it. Sometimes you say it, you're like, I know I should be grateful for this, but I don't feel it. So that's why you start with something that you actually feel. And then we can bring those things back in that we know we should be grateful for. But we for some reason, we can't tap into it at that point. And then we build onto it. And we really get into that emotion. So the emotion is important for you. We can't just lie, we can't just like straight up lie to ourselves without a feeling or an emotion because it just, it doesn't fly that way. The emotion is important. That's what taps taps you into that heart coherence. Otherwise, we're just saying words. And while words can be powerful, if there is no feeling behind them, they're kind of just empty. And I also mentioned the rampage of appreciation. So that was um, something that Abraham Hicks talked about like Esther and Jerry Hicks. Esther channels this consciousness and they call themselves Abraham. They have lots of cool messages and practices and they do also talk about, you know, feeling gratitude and appreciation and always talk about when we want to create a life of we want or we want to like be closer to our dreams. We just want to choose the next best feeling thing. So wherever we are, if we're feeling low, Just choose the next best feeling thought, next best feeling feeling. We're just rising, raising ourselves up step by step. So they talk about rampages of appreciation, which are basically like you grab a pen and paper or you open a document on your computer and you start writing things that you appreciate, like all the small things you appreciate, like I appreciate my pen, I appreciate this cup of coffee, I appreciate my pretty journal, I appreciate this, I appreciate that, and you just build up on it in the same way that creates that higher frequency emotion. And it, it's cool, once you start doing that, then it's like creates space for your intuition to come through. Because again, you're entering like a state of coherence, and then you can get like a little download of this is what I want to do now. Like, this is what I'm being called to. (sighs) Okay. So I think that's all we needed to talk about today. We talked about what gratitude is. We talked about the importance of elevated emotions. We talked about heart rate variability and heart coherence and how these are connected and connected with our elevated emotions and why it's important to be in a state of heart coherence. Like we, right now, I don't think we can be in heart coherence all day, every day, maybe one day, but by this nature of heart rate variability, it's going to change throughout the day and that's fine. That's okay. But as long as we're practicing our heart coherence we're practicing to tap into this feeling like remember the study I talked about even 15 to 20 minutes a day of being in gratitude is going to make a difference so and then you're just going to naturally build up on that you're going to naturally look for things to be grateful for you'll naturally be in a more elevated state so just start wherever we're just bringing more gratitude into our reality So we talked about heart coherence and how to tap into gratitude and how to tap into appreciation. And also that gratitude helps us bring our manifest manifestations to reality. So I encourage you to start a gratitude practice, no matter how small, no matter how big you can do like 
your gratitude meditation in the morning. You can do, oh, I also like this one where you do um, gratitude journaling in the evening, like write five things you're grateful for from throughout the day. And setting that intention to do it in the evening means that throughout the day, you're going to be looking for things to be grateful for. So that is also another way to rewire your brain to look into that. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you like and subscribe um, to the podcast, the YouTube channel, and share this episode with somebody that might also enjoy it. Okay, wishing you a beautiful week. Or actually weekend, because it's Friday. Wishing you a beautiful weekend.